Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Trace video and today we're going to be playing Superbike 22 and today we're going to be here in San Juan Villacum for the Argentinian round of Superbike and we're going to be competing in a time trial. I haven't played Superbike much recently but I've been eager to get back into it and I noticed this lap time that I did a long time ago wasn't that great so I'm hoping I can beat the 135 and hopefully get ourselves into the 1. 34s, but uh, this video was inspired with the recent news coming out from Superbike that unfortunately the wonderful circuit of San Juan Villacan will not be hosting round 12 of World Superbike this season and gotta say it's a damn shame. I think it's a very much a uh, probably a, an opportunity for Bautista to win again but the long straight makes things interesting for Bautista and obviously not for the rest of us but with a lot of corners a lot of tight twisty sections could have been interesting to see what Top Rack could have done and brought the fight against the Ducati. So uh, it's a shame not to have this Argentinian round. I believe it's something political. And that is the reason why San Juan Villacan will not be on the World Superbike calendar this season. Now, from my understanding is that World Superbike and Dorna do intend to have a 12th round this season. And I'm hearing a lot of rumours that it could potentially be either Jerez or even the Nürburgring GP. I don't know where that came from, but my goodness, it would be great to see the Nürburgring back in World Superbike, and even mentions of the Sepang International Circuit in Malaysia as well. But nothing is in stone yet. Everything is just completely up for grabs, and uh, yeah, everything is just rumours for the time being. And of course, there's a lot of rumours right now in World Superbike. The latest rumour I heard today was that Jonathan Ray may be moving over to the Yamaha factory, and Scott Redding on board the Kawasaki with Alex Lowe's. Very fascinating stuff, and uh, I actually like the sound of that. I think it sounds cool. But I don't know whether the Yamaha can bring Jonathan Ray back to world championship winning glory. I guess we really don't know. Of course, the massive news about Top Rack Razgatlioglu going over to BMW, which I think is absolutely fantastic. So I'm keen to see what can happen in 2024 for World Superbike. So, anyway. Long story short, that is the intro, and we're going to be focusing on trying to improve our lap times here in San Juan. I do like the circuit, but I've got to be honest, it feels strange. It's It's been a while since i played Superbike 22. I've been balancing with so many other games, and coming straight back to this, I made so many mistakes. I was braking way too late, too eager on the acceleration. The electronics is not quite the same as it is in MotoGP. Just a very different experience and I, I really feel great coming back to Superbike. It, it just gives me that extra motivation to start learning, start putting that time in and improving my skill levels once more. So before we get really into things, if you're enjoying the content, if you're new around here as well, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm pushing for 8,000 subscribers before Ride 5 arrives and I would really appreciate your assistance in getting to that milestone. But if not, or you're already subscribed, then I thank you in advance and let's crack on with the rest of this video. So I'm hoping we can get into the 134s, but as I've mentioned many times already, it's just getting the feel back for Superbike 22. Going too wide in a lot of corners, you've seen it just a moment ago in turn one, there's opportunity to improve. And that's what I like about this game. It's, it's coming back, it's, it's, it's familiar, it's there in your mind, you know it's there. It's just trying to figure it out, and unfortunately that's an absolute mess going into the fifth corner. That is a complete sham. So I will complete this lap, but let's skip ahead. So even though it, this lap will be invalidated, it's still not too bad. Of course, it is the slowest lap we've done so far, but only a tenth slower than the previous one, and still relatively consistent with the mid-136s. But I've got to be honest, that's not good enough. We're not looking for 136s here. We're looking for two seconds better. 134s and maybe a low 134 if we can do it, but already getting the feeling back for Superbike 22. And the Ducati probably being one of the easiest bikes to use within Superbike 22, it should go pretty well in today's video. So into the left-hand side for turn five, still running the SC1 and SC0 tyres. So that's basically your medium options for both of them here. The soft front and the sort of medium to hard rear. And then into the braking zone here for the left-hand side. This is where the front's going to really come into its own here. We do a lot of braking on the side or on the angle of the tyre. And then a lot of power coming out from the rear of the bike as we bring on the power. Now I probably will consider changing over to the SCX towards the end of the video. But for now, the SC0 seems to be a good choice. 
as we oh, just trying to keep the bike from turning away from itself there just we were turning in but just felt like it wanted to escape itself and start crashing as we go deep into turn 11 that's a big shame that has cost us a significant amount of time and if we had got that right we would put ourselves what seven tenths closer towards our target for today's video that's, that's not too bad it's it's pretty reasonable considering we're so early on in the attempt so far fourth lap coming to completion now across the line this will put us into the 136 twos so still a second away but I'm happy with that progression usually whenever I jump on to do these videos if it's a game I've not played in a while I tend to start off a couple of seconds too slow and then you'll see the lap times coming in you'll see the positioning on the circuit the braking will look a lot better and it'll just start working out and everything will just become to its point of it getting back to that peak performance. We're certainly not there yet, but we're still working out the kinks. Getting away from the MotoGP 23's uh, feeling of the bike when you accelerate as the bike lifts up. And that's not a thing here in Superbike 22, but across into the long straight again, waiting for that braking marker, which is here. Very firm on the brakes, just sliding the Ducati in, getting very close to touching the outside of the circuit, and we did actually invalidate that one. It didn't look like we did, but I guess when we had that small bobble, we must have just put a wheel onto the green, and unfortunately that has ended that particular attempt. But I'm not going to cut ahead here, because I would still like to tackle turn 11 again. I think tackling turn 11 in the right manner, which we've done so far to turn 10, this will give us a better indication of what lap time we could potentially do. Nine tenths of a second we're trending to be high and looks like we're going to mess this one up as well. Going too deep into turn 14, that's cost us. So unfortunately, this lap will not count. We did look to improve, but I feel positive now for the next couple of attempts. So I hope you guys are still going to stay with me for now. So after a quick pit stop, I have decided to go for the SCX rear tyre. I think doing five laps and not really achieving much... I would have always done my lap times with the SCX in the past, so I guess it makes sense. And already, into the first split, we are trending to be going in the right direction here. Into the left-hand side, the gap will come up now. It is a tenth of a second in our favour. This is looking rather positive for us at this stage of the, uh, of the qualifying, or at least this time trial. Look at us getting loose going into turn five there. The Ducati does like to sort of move around a bit. With these tyres, I thought the SCX would make things a little bit grippier, but it does feel like there's a lot of movement with the rear tyre right now. And again, onto the brakes. A very difficult braking part, this one. It feels like you're braking too early, but when you lean in to the left-hand side for six and then into seven, you realise you're actually carrying the right amount of speed. And I would say this could be the first lap time to put us back into the 135s. The first time in so many months. I don't remember the last time I set a, a time trial in this one. This could even be my only ever time trial where I did with the the Honda. I did a video calling it Learning San Villicum or something similar to that. Oh, I'll tell you what, we're up by 1.4 here, but this is 1.4 seconds to the 136.2. This could be a 134.8. If we get this right, which it looks like we're going to, our first experience with the SCX rear could be absolutely golden. Across the line we go, and that's it. We've improved. A, a record that has stayed there for such a long time for me has been improved here today. That was back when I was using the DualShock 4 controller. Now I'm using the DualSense controller. Everything's changing. And of course, with a lot of MotoGP 23 experience, maybe that's helping me out here in Superbike 22 right now. Could we do it again? Oh, it looks like uh, that lap was a one-hit wonder. We're not going to be improving on this one, are we? Three or four tenths of a second. Oh, never mind. We're down. We're definitely not improving now, are we? <laughs> so after a small mishap, I have decided to come back and do a few more laps. I would like to see where our potential is going to be, because if we were able to get into the 134s after six laps, there's no doubt that we can do even better than that. A 133 might be a bit optimistic, and unfortunately, I don't know if I have enough time to really sit down and get into the nitty gritty and really get into the momentum for it. I'm going to have to come back to this at some point very soon. That's if you guys want to see it, of course. It, it, very, it all uh, depends on what you guys want to see. If you don't want to see Superbike 22, then of course I won't be making the video. But uh, if you are interested, you, you know 
For a fact, I'll be making more videos on this game because I, I absolutely love Superbike 22. I felt like it's a, it was a big turning point for my uh, content creation in general. I had a lot of live streams, over a thousand views, that you guys were really keen in watching, and yeah, Superbike 22 very special to me, so I'm hoping to keep this in my rotation of videos. So into the right hand side here, great breaking point for you there, to break at the TSO sign, that shadow right underneath it is a great indication of when to start breaking with the Takati Panagali V4R. Now into the right hand side, a little bit deep for turn 10. But as we turn back in for turn 11, you mustn't touch the rumble strip there. Get too close to turn 12, and it will be good night, Vienna. This time around, looking quite positive. Breaking at the shadow of the Gien, of the Garn sign. I never know how to pronounce that. Is it Gien? Gien sign? Yeah, you see it the next time around if you didn't quite see it. But across the line, this is not an improvement. We're back down to the 135 twos. So this is where we were when I left it last time from doing a video a long time ago. Into turn two, as we go into the right hand side and briefly turn to the left for turn three. Still about close, it, 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 okay, two tenths per second down. Didn't quite have the speed and confidence going into, wow, we lost a lot of time, we lost a lot of time. We're gonna have to pull something out of the hat here for this to be an improvement. And I, I, I'm not sure, seven tenths per second down? Are we even trending? Are we even close to trending in the right direction? I don't think we are. This has been a disappointing lap. Well, I'm, I'm going to try it anyway because I say there's a lot in my videos and I'm going to say it again. Sometimes the the inhibition is gone. You know that this lap time is not going to matter, so why not try something that you probably wouldn't do usually? So my goal for this one is I'm going to break as late as I possibly can over turn 8 and go for that tight apex. That worked out relatively well. We saved ourselves a tenth, but here into turn 10, let's see if we can't do that better. Into the right-hand side for turn 10, then to turn 11 briefly, turn 12 to the left-hand side, back across to turn 13. Still losing time. Can we break any later here? We're not gaining any time, no. So even if the inhibition had gone, we were still not improving. We're going to try the old eSports technique of upshifting to second gear way before you need to. Looks like it does help quite a lot coming into that final corner, but look at the bounce oh, the rear tire bouncing and skipping on the on the approach to turn one there. We're up by a tenth of a second again. Into the first split. The uh, the gap comes up any moment now, just as you turn left here, come into the straight, and there you go. Tenth and a half a second to our favour at the current Dr. Ace version. On the brakes we'll go for the Alvaro Bautista before he made it to world champion status in World Superbike. We're up shifting. This is looking quite positive. This is looking quite ideal for our opportunity of getting into the 134s again. On the brakes we'll go onto the fat parts of the tyres. We slide it in. Into oh, we've messed it up. <laughs> oh, can you believe it? I've done it again. Ah. Well, that wasn't quite ideal, so let's see what we can do now. We're on lap 10. I can't really leave it on lap 9, can I? So lap 10, this should be the one. If it's not the one, then maybe I'll consider doing another lap. But 10, 10 laps is usually my go-to number for these videos. So we're already up by a tenth of a second. Let's not make that same mistake as we did on that previous exchange. I did complete the lap. Or, no, in fact, I didn't complete the lap, did I? I, I completely restarted it just for these final laps, so this is the one here. Can we get it back into the 134s? I am disappointed that I've not been able to stay within the 134s. It, I'm still getting used to it, and it just doesn't feel quite natural to me just quite yet, but rest assured it will do the more I begin to play this game and get back into the feeling again. So into turn six, we are trending to be going forwards. Look at us sliding it in to turn seven, touching the apex and the curb there. Oh, we're trending. It was the delta was green for a moment, but it's still not going in our favour. Breaking firm into turn eight, nice and tight to the apex as we slide on the power for the acceleration of the Ducati into the right hand side. Move over to the left ever so slightly, bring it back in for eleven, and just chuck it in anger to turn twelve. Quick upshift to second and to third. Not quite close enough, but it could be an improvement nonetheless. As long as we get back into the 134s, I can end this video as a very happy man. 
into turn 15. Quick upshift to second. It's, imper it's imperative you get that done as we'll get across the line. It's... Oh, it could be... No, it's not quite an improvement. But we're back into on 38. Uh, 34-8. I can't speak. My apologies. So into turn one. A little bit deep, but we're still in the green. I lied. We're not going to do 10 laps. It looks like we're going to do 11. Why not let it fly? I can't see any issues in the comment section. I'm sure you don't mind. We're up by two tenths of a second almost. Oh, we lost a bit of time there. There could have been a lot of time to gain if we got that right going into the right hand side there. A little bit deep for turn five, but it's okay because we'll get the cut back into the nice tight part of the apex. Oh, I tell you what. Rub your hands together, guys and gals. We have a tenth of a second advantage on the massive straight with the Panagali V4R. Onto the brakes we go for the Ducati. Into the left hand side for six. Clipping the apex of six. Can we clip the apex of seven? Pretty well, actually. That was nice. Oh, this could be special. Look to the shadow underneath the Tiso sign and start breaking in. This is not a guide, but that's a great tip for you for future reference. Up by three tenths of a second temporarily. Oh, rub your hands together, guys and gals. This could be the one. This could be it. Up by three and a half tenths of a second. Very tight to the apex for turn 12 there. Quick upshift to 13. This could be the one. Don't start getting nervous now going into turn 14 and losing time. Down to first gear, still holding the Ducati into the left-hand side. Upshift into second. Upshift into third. Avoid the wheelie. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is an improvement. It's a 134.592. So there you are then guys, thanks for watching the video, I do hope you enjoyed, those are my lap times on screen right now, so if you're still playing Superbike 22 and you want to compare your lap time with mine, you can do so here with the individual splits on screen right now. But guys, that is it from me, thank you very much for watching the video, I do hope you enjoyed, if you did, let me know in the comments section down below, and of course, don't forget to like and subscribe as well. If you want to be part of the Dot Trace Pit Crew, you can do so by joining in the link in the description down below. And if not, I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Ciao for now. Oh hi! Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.